Welcome everybody out there to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. A warm welcome in the name of JFT Brokers as well. My name is Stefan Fredrichowski and yeah, I'm not alone today. Um, there's uh, somebody else here. Jens is within the webinar as well. Hello, Jens. Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me? Oh, you, you, uh, your voice is a little bit low, but maybe that was only at my end. Hopefully it works. Oh. Uh, better in a second okay oh yeah that's great that's, yeah, that's better fun. okay sounds much better yeah today the 19th of april 2018 7 p.m um at least uh, in uh, germany and uh, those other countries around um yeah it's a pleasure for us uh, to have you here um <laughs> oh i got a <laughs> notice here that um <laughs> Somebody is astonished that this uh, webinar is in English. Yeah, but uh, maybe a remark uh, to that in general, we have always the webinars in uh, German and English. Um, it's typically always the next day. So if uh, somebody is especially interested in the same webinar in German, then there are um, already recordings of that webinar around because you uh, always find the recordings of any webinar um, from, from me, from Jens, from uh, anybody else from JFD um, directly at the JFD YouTube channel and if you press exactly JFD YouTube channel in Google then um, you will be directly um, linked to that web page and you find the recordings of any webinar there latest the day after the official time of the webinar so um, so in case it's um, a problem in, with the English here, um, you have the opportunity in German as well, and the recordings are already uploaded. So uh, that about recordings in general, and uh, especially for today, the, today's topic is uh, once again JVD basket portfolio, um, because we decided to say it, it's, it's a good thing to talk in, um, after one month once again about the basket, uh, to really share performance figures with you and to share additional strategies with you as well, because it's not exactly the copy of last time uh, webinar. It's what JFD stands for. It's, it's exactly transparency, what we want to achieve. And that means we talk about the results and we make them public. Of course, those of you who are already invested in the JFD basket portfolio, then you, you definitely get your monthly report. Um, but uh, I think not everybody here um, uh, is already invested. But let's see. Um, Let's see uh, what we can change maybe today. So it's again JFD Basket Portfolio. It's something like a product. Yes, we talk about a product. It means in general, yeah, it's a little bit advertisement for that. But in the sense, we do webinars. That means we want to transport knowledge as well because we talk about trading strategies, risk allocation, and some other things. So that, as always, uh, we try to to achieve that you can learn something else and not just um, looking to an advertisement uh, video. So that's definitely not what we want to achieve here. Um, you find already the. Um, uh, the slides of today uh, in um, the GoTo webinar control panel. So, so that means you can download uh, them if you like, or if you have any questions um, later, you can get in touch directly with me, with Jens, um, and you saw already the email address. They are on the slides, so it's no problem to get in touch with us. You know, I have always to to show once uh, the slides. It's a risk disclaimer about. Um, what you do with trading strategies, what you learn within webinars. When you finally trade, um, you trade for your own, especially when we later show uh, two other strategies in more detail. If you trade them, then you trade on your own responsibility. But I think that's self-explaining and uh, um, it's set now. A little bit more in detail what are the topics we first we want to share with you that as always behind the scene are people and so we have to introduce ourselves to that you know who is managing that kind of account um, because on the one hand we talk about money but finally we talk about people and um, 
that's important to to know who is doing what why and that you know a little bit more about those people being involved here of course we we talk a little bit more in detail how we trade and what we trade what kind of underlyings and so on we put another topic here for today that is um, and you may have heard of that already um, that is uh, so-called esma uh, regulation uh, changes uh, which are coming in a couple of weeks or maybe two or three months um, and it's all around uh, what is or the impact on trading in general and especially what might be the impact on JFT basket portfolio. Um, the good news is uh, you will learn that we are not really affected here. Um, but we want to give you some additional information about the ESMA regulations and changes for CFD trading uh, here within that webinar as well. Then we go to the big picture of strategies, how they perform. You will see a little bit more performance uh, figures of uh, individual strategies. And then two strategies, once again, in detail. Not the same uh, than month, one month ago. Uh, we talk about today about um, breakout trades on DAX and S&P 500 and as well as on gold that are two strategies within the portfolio and you will learn all the details and uh, time frames uh, parameter settings in order to even duplicate the strategies for your own without directly following uh, or investing into the jfd basket portfolio Finally, we want to touch the topic of um, risk management because that's mm, Besides the fact that you need profitable strategies, it's the most important aspect uh, of trading in general, especially if you are trading in a more professional way and if you have a complete portfolio of strategies, then risk management is key for success. Finally, of course, a little bit about how to participate uh, within the JFD basket portfolio. But let's start with the people and the people being involved are mainly Jens, me, then there's another one, Plamen, uh, in, uh, from JFD directly um, from, from headquarter. And um, I want to mention one guy additionally here that is Peter Müller, who is coding the expert advisors for those strategies which are uh, running automatically. But let's really start with those who are behind the basket portfolio. And um, yeah, let's uh, start with Jens. Yes, sure. Uh, thanks a lot for the for the uh, very nice introduction, Stefan. Um, yeah, what what shall I say about my person? Um, so currently, I'm uh, working as the global head of research and education at JFD Brokers, and uh, not only that, but also I'm um, uh, offering a managed account under. Uh, well, yes, I offered. A managed account under the license umbrella from JFD. I started out with this project already in uh, September 2016. You will probably hear about this uh, a little more later on. Um, and um, yeah, then at the beginning of 2018, and after being uh, quite successful with this project, um, JFD asked whether we probably should expand this uh, corporation a little in terms of uh, managing uh, clients' money here. Together with Stefan, uh, give my in fact, this questionary approach, which I will introduce a little later on too. Um, um, what's the word for um, uh, adding? Adding, yeah, adding is the word I'm most looking for. Uh, so um, adding some uh, more quantitative uh, trading approaches to it. And uh, this is where Stefan comes into play. And um, yeah, so um, in fact, that's that's a little around my, my person. So I'm trading the markets for Something like uh, I don't know over ten years. Um, I, I started out as a as a um, trading assistant, quite classically, um, at a stockbroker here in Germany, and uh, learned trading from scratch there. And uh, yeah, from there everything uh, went the way uh, it went, let's say. And uh, today I'm sitting here, and uh, I'm really happy to be here. Thanks very much, Jens. And um, Jens is, by the way, sitting in Berlin, as a capital of uh, Germany. Um, yes, the, the, the 200 the kilometers to the south, uh, south of uh, Berlin, close to Dresden. And you see how everything is running. I mean, the, the world today is um, 
full of computers and we have all the um, capabilities and uh, opportunities to do it uh, from from home um, so that's uh, quite excellent yeah and a little bit about um, more about me so Jens is really, let's say, out of the financial scene. You know, my background uh, is totally different. Um, so I have studied physics and I have worked in physics in, um, for nearly two decades. And then I transferred to uh, the financial scene. But still, I have always the view uh, of a physician about trading. That means I look to everything a little bit more mathematically, a little bit more statistically. But finally, and that's always amazing, um, is um, especially between Jens and me, um, yeah, the, the, the final view quite similar, but uh, it's a perfect combination of uh, what we have here. And it's a great team. Uh, to be part of that is even uh, very good. And you know that finally, if uh, a little bit more, what I do here is yeah to to derive um, trading strategies which have a profitable edge that we know that uh, what we do um, is profitable at least it has been proven to be profitable in the past and since the methodologies i apply there um, um, i try to make sure i cannot guarantee anything as always when it comes to trading uh, that the things i derive from history uh, that they have um, a good chance in the future as well yeah, so that's uh, my part within uh, the JFD basket portfolio. And um, it's a combination of uh, different uh, skills. And that's what you need uh, for such a project. Of course, what are we doing here? What or What is the JFD basket portfolio at all? So strictly speaking it's an investment product uh, for private and institutional investors and uh, we always um, say in the same line that it is a conservative instrument because what we try to achieve is a moderate return with low risk and it's not maybe the way most of the traders are doing um, they try to double their account in two months or whatever um, dreaming of extremely high returns um, no that's not um, our philosophy behind it's really uh, reducing risk have a low risk and still have some return and uh, beating at least people in the same um, environment um, and mm, it looks good so to say uh, what are we doing exactly we have nine individual strategies which create that kind of portfolio so we have a very diversified um, basket and um, trading approach here and it's that we have about 80 percent is uh, being traded automatically and 20 percent is discretionary and if i write down those numbers uh, what do i mean with 80 percent and 20 it's not um, the number of trades no it's the risk allocation behind uh, because when you do trading professional then it's all about risk and um, those numbers reflect exactly uh, the risk behind those kind of um, proportions and we trade uh, forex indices gold um, cfds um, at least up to now um, we we might have in future other instruments as well but um, that's what we do um, basically here uh, all the days and you see already a table with a performance um, of uh, long-term history uh, which is everything is live so it's no no back testing we have back tests for all those strategies uh, more than 10 years but uh, i could share those as well but that's not really what counts it's always the what counts is what we have in live accounts and uh, we have a long history already starting in 2016 uh, thanks to Jens uh, who has uh, started that business already early and um, 
then in, in within February, uh, we made uh, a decision to to have uh, other instruments and other trading strategies to come in place as well. Those strategies um, have a history of um, about one year in live accounts, um, not being reflected in those numbers, but we have those histories. Uh, and the good thing is it works well. And you see, um, last month's result was um, yeah the best ever um, up to now. So three uh, percent uh, growth in a single month, which is absolutely outstanding, and it's even more than we would expect. Therefore, if you ask myself, um, can we have that number every month? Straight answer: no. Um, that would not reflect um, the, the philosophy of those strategies. And um, of course, it would be nice, but uh, that's not uh, what uh, I think we can repeat every month. But nevertheless, it was a great month in, in March. But you see some more about uh, performance uh, later. Um, now, since a couple of weeks, uh, we have some news about the regulations of CFD trading and therefore we change uh, for a few minutes here the topic uh, because it's quite important for, for, for traders at all. And therefore, let's spend some minutes here as well because it might have an impact on the basket portfolio. It definitely will have an impact on your personal training, uh, trading, but maybe Jens, you can explain it much better than I can. You mean the way I am trading? <laughs> no, about um, the impact. I, oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I already jumped to the next. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that was yeah. Yesterday, um, uh, that that was uh, also a topic, and and I thought you you we already uh, had to say. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes. Uh, sure. Um, uh, so first of all, I think. Um, mm, the, the, the main question is, is our product um, uh, in any way um, affected by this um, decision? And the answer, the clear answer is no. And uh, the reason to this is um, quite simple. Oh, oh, by the way, probably um, it makes sense, as it did yesterday, um, to have a look here at the chart, which I already presented yesterday. One second, I just see whether I... Where do I have it here? So I had it open already today because there was a webinar here in Germany um, together I, with uh, Chris, the head of German speaking markets. And uh, I showed this chart there too. Um, but first of all, let me just see. So first of all here, so this is my screen. So now you should see a chart. And nevertheless, I want to, one second, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here. There we go. So there we go. Um, so as you can see, traders who are profitable. And um, as you can see here, um, this is the uh, X axis. So you, there you can see the leverage those traders were using in their trading. So it's uh, less than five to one. And that um, coincided here with 40% uh, of the people being profitable. While uh, a leverage, and in this case, by the way, we are talking about the effective leverage. So it's not the um, a nominal leverage, uh, which is uh, attacked from the ESMA decision here. So uh, that said, what, what does it mean um, in this context? Um, what I can show you, by the way, is something I have prepared here too. One second. I'll just whoop, bring this over here. So, so as you can see here, this is uh, the website from the ESMA. It uh, says agrees to prohibit binary options. And this is highly welcome. And restrict CFDs to protect retail investors. This is a question. Uh, well, on the one hand, we can, as we will see here with the effective leverage, we will agree that this is a good decision. On the other hand, uh, I think 98% of the people uh, voted against this decision. So not sure whether you should uh, bring up such a such a, a prohibition here if uh, nearly 100 percent of the people are against it that there's nothing 
so much in common with with democracy, but this is a different topic. So um, let's let's look a look here at uh, those uh, agreed measures, and there you can see that uh, they restricted the leverage, for example, to thirty to one for major currency pairs or twenty to one for non-major currency pairs. Now this is miners like uh, Euro GBP. Is Euro GBP a minor? Can we consider it like that? I'm not sure. I'm, I don't um, know. <laughs> But Australian dollar, Japanese yen, let's say, that's definitely a minor. Mm. Um, um, so, and that's, this is restricted to 20 to one here, but also this counts for uh, gold, but also major indices, for example. And um, here other commodities, or other than gold, other commodities, uh, this also includes um, a crude oil, for example, cryptocurrencies two to one, for example. Um, however, the thing is that this is here, we are referring to the so-called nominal leverage. The thing is that here, this chart shows the so-called effective leverage. Um, and the effective leverage is uh, defined as the uh, um, units you trade, like let's say one lot, which equals to 100,000 units in let's say Euro USD. And then you divide this number by the account size. And let's say you're trading a 10,000 Euro account, you divide 100, by 10 or 100,000 by 10,000, and then you get 10 to one. So this is the effective leverage. And this chart illustrates that um, the lesser the, um, uh, or the, the uh, lower, the lower um, the effective leverage is, the more likely it is that the traders are profitable. So the effective leverage, in fact, has never been and will never be a topic in our um, basket investors portfolio. In fact, it, ha it does not even affect my personal, my private trading, um, because um, leverage and the uh, uh, low leverage in my trading has always been a um, very important topic because I know about this um, correlation between profitability in trading and uh, effective leverage. And it increases the chances of um, doing the right things in your trading. For example, being capable of letting winning trades run, cutting losing trades short, and not being affected by cognitive biases and that stuff. Um, it increases the chances dramatically. And so um, to, to make long things short, I think the effective leverage we are using in our basket is, uh, if it's one to one, then it's quite high, I think. Um, I'm, I think we are even below this, this threshold because our approach from a risk and money management perspective is a very conservative one, in fact. Yes, and these are my, my thoughts around the, the ESMA. Very good. Uh, let me bring back my screen just as a second. Uh, so here we go, hopefully. So, in general, it affects everybody uh, who's trading, but um, and whether that will protect anybody in, in the final uh, end, um, I don't know. But uh, at least from from my end, I do not really comment on that decision, for which is more important for me and uh, for the JFD basket portfolio. Are we prepared? And the answer is yes. Uh, and as Jens uh, pointed out, uh, our effective, uh, effective leverage is um, extremely small and uh, it will be that way. So having said that, that we are not affected, let's go back to uh, strategies and uh, the overall performance of uh, the, uh, the portfolio. Uh, let me have a first view here on the JFD um, basket and um, yeah, you, you see once again the monthly return table um, as before um, but we can have a look here as well to uh, individual trades and uh, or even let's uh, scale it um, for the last months um, what we have done since uh, then that you get a feeling of how our performance is um, is running and um, then let's have a chart on that. Uh, let's do it relatively. That's a um, little more um, um, speaking, uh, so to say. So you see uh, the results since um, uh, the 1st of March last uh, month. Um, so that's 10 days after we made changes uh, to, to the basket. And you will see for individual strategies, longer history as well. Um, you see it, it really works great. 
<clears throat> we we have been uh, already at 3.5 and now going a little bit down. But what's important is that those spikes, those um, drawdown movements, that those are small. And that's exactly uh, what we try to achieve here, um, to have it really um, smooth and not over trading uh, the account. Definitely no. Uh, everything is, is really uh, conservative um, here. And if you look a little bit <clears throat> more to the individual strategies, let's first have an overview here on my slide. Um, you know that we have a history in total from 2016, and then we have those additional eight <clears throat> strategies with a history of um, um, about one year now. And um, yeah, today we or last time we talk uh, a little bit more in detail about the two uh, yellow, uh, yellow, blue marked uh, strategies here. Today we go for the green. Uh, Goat and Dax and S and P 500, and we have additional uh, other five stra four strategies here um, within the basket portfolio. And if we look a little bit to the individual performance of those, uh, then you know, we can do it here. Uh, that's uh, starting uh, last summer, and you see all for for each of those strategies an individual uh, percentage growth. Um, and you see that not everything is straight going north. Of course, no. Um, we have even strategies like the blue one here, uh, right after the start going south, then recovering um, still in the profitable region right now. And um, I know that it's hard to read uh, the first line here, but it might not tell you anything uh, even. So let me comment directly, which is, um, strategy is um, which color and if you look for example to the red one that's the uh, um, breakout euro japanese yen we discussed uh, a month ago in in more detail um, really great strategy <laughs> more or less um, smooth uh, going north then we have another one <clears throat> this by the way uh, it just just if i'm allowed to interrupt you uh, euro japanese yen uh, just uh, triggered our take profit several minutes ago uh, oh. So, uh, <laughs> yes, it worked out really nice today. <laughs> okay, if you uh, say that, then let me have a, a, an additional view on that, going directly into that account. And yeah, um, as you said, you see a green line here. Um, normally, that trade is, um, if it not reaches a stop loss or take profit uh, within the day. It's closed at uh, 10 German time in the evening. And um, since it's already closed, that means exactly what you have said. It's in the take profit. Um, if you look back, because we, if I have it here already now, you see for the last five days, uh, three red lines, meaning um, that have been um, loser trades and two green ones. But if I would sum them up, uh, it would be already within one week uh, a profitable region. So um, that's exactly that strategy. And what you see here is really um, the the real account of that um, sub strategy. And technically speaking, uh, what happens to the basket? Uh, those uh, sub accounts um, are more or less mirrored. Um, into the basket and uh, therefore I can have here still a look to the individual strategy in a single account and um, looking for those results here. So it's really a nice strategy and um, we have an ebook for that strategy um, and you can have it still. We, we mentioned that last time uh, and it's still available, of course. So if you have interest in, in more details about that strategy, uh, we can send around uh, that ebook. And um, going back here to, to, to the picture of uh, individual um, contributions, uh, for example, you see that, let's call it a brown or I cannot really say the color name here. Uh, so this one here, <clears throat> the br uh, brown line, um, that is the one we discussed today. That is the uh, DAX and S&P 500 uh, breakout trades. And you see what happens there. For a long time, it was a little bit more flat. And then with upcoming volatility, that strategy develops quite well. 
Um, but even before it has been profitable already, so that's very nice as well. And we, we have some others here, um, which go straight steady with small amounts, but only north. That's good as well. Uh, those are the one um, on the lower end of my list. And even if the last one here um, is the GOAT strategy, I want to mention that as well, because since one year, um, it, it did um, around 10% because the history of that account is a little bit older than I started here. So even that one uh, is doing quite well. So uh, that's uh, for some individual strategies. And let's jump into those uh, individual here directly. How do they work? And since I want to start with uh, the DAX and S&P 500, which is doing quite well, um, over the last couple of weeks, especially, um, and is extremely profitable for one year history. Um, let's talk about how breakout strategies work in general. Even I have the same picture about uh, Euro Japanese yen here, but um, I just want to illustrate breakout strategies in general. And breakout strategies are quite simple um, because what you start uh, you start simply with two times, so two vertical lines within the chart. One is here at um, midnight, and the other one is at eight o'clock. So we we have an, um, a time period here, and now what we ask ourselves is, within the time period, what is the price range? So from the time range, midnight to eight, we can build up the price range. In this case, it's uh, the upper end is here, the, the, the red line, <clears throat> and the lower end is that line here, that gray line here. So we have a price range. And now the, the, the principle of breakout strategies is when it comes to 8 o'clock, the end of our time range, time, time period, then we place two orders, a buy stop order at the upper end, and the sell stop order at the lower end. And then we wait. And those two orders are normally um, OCO, which means one cancels the other. So if one is triggered, you, you simply cancel, you delete uh, the other one. What about stop loss? Stop loss is quite easy here within that strategy. It's always the opposite range. That means the sell stop order here has a, a stop loss exactly here at the red line and vice versa. In my case, um, a few hours after eight, um, I think it's two hours here, later the short has been triggered. And of course, whenever somebody is um, um, talking about a strategy, definitely he will take an example which works perfectly but um, today i have a live result as well for that one but anyhow um so price went further south and that's exactly what breakout strategies um, aim for so if there's a move please in one direction so sustainable uh, so to say and here we reach a couple of hours later our take profit level <clears throat> and of course, we have to ask what is the take profit distance? What is the risk reward ratio? And in my example on the slide here, I have a risk reward ratio of exactly one uh, because the distance between stop loss and entry is exactly the same distance between entry and take profit. That's the risk reward ratio one, and that's all. If you look a little bit more mathematically on that kind of strategy, then you realize immediately that we have at least three degrees of freedom or parameters. Um, we have two times, one the range start time and the other one the range end time. So in principle, I could can go for one o'clock to 10 o'clock or eight to 12 or whatever. Uh, lots of combinations are possible. So that are two degrees of freedom, two parameters. And the third one is a take profit multiplier. My example is risk reward ratio of one, but of course I could go for a um, risk reward ratio of uh, two or three or whatever. And that's breakout strategies. More are possible, more parameters, and we use them. 
for those mentioned already, um, what we typically use additionally are EMAs to have a trend filter. So that means we not go for um, both um, trade directions, only for one. So only in favor of the overall uh, EMA direction. And the other one is we might use is something like a minimum range. And um, the reason for that is if the range is extremely small. So if you think about uh, if you, you, you calculate the distance in percentage, uh, upper and lower end, and if that range is extremely small, then going for a trade here doesn't make sense because a little bit up and down, um, some price movements, some random movements even, uh, would kick you out of the trade and therefore to have something like a minimum range is always good for those uh, strategies as well. A little bit more detail for the DAX and S&P 500 trades. We have six sub strategies within that strategy and you see even that we, we have more diverse, diversification within the portfolio. Um, if I say we have nine strategies, but there are always sub strategies. So it's um, even diversified more than uh, just nine strategies. In this case, we have um, three sub strategies for DAX and three sub strategies for S&P 500. And you see always we have different range times here. And if I say 1139, what I mean here is I, finally I mean 1140, but it's exactly at 1140 we place the order if we place those order. And that if means we only place orders if the minimum range, in this case 0.2%, is succeeded. So only then we place orders. And you see different risk reward ratios and different EMAs for those um, sub strategies. For a long time, S&P 500 has had no trades or very less trades. Since now two or three months, we have more volatility in the market for S&P 500 as well. And um, then we have trades there um, as well. Let's have a look directly into the uh, the account here. Uh, then we can see uh, how it looks today. And um, you see uh, two, two main charts. One is the S&P 500 on the left hand. And you see uh, on the right hand uh, here in the middle, uh, the DAX. And uh, you can easily realize that we have two open trades. We have a short trade for DAX. Um, being um, in the profit region right now, and we have a short rate uh, for S&P 500 as well. But you might say, hey, there have been six strategies. Why not having six trades? Okay, they might be in profit or stop loss already, but in this case, no. Um, if you read a little bit here, um, in the small letters uh, within the chart in, in, in the white, then you can realize range, smaller than minimum. Oh, that means for the first trade, no trade because the range has been too small. And the third one as well here. So there was only one trading possibility for today within the DAX. Same for um, S&P 500. Uh, out of the three, two have not exceeded the minimum range and therefore no trade. And now we have something, a good overall situation and maybe Jens uh, we can go for that um, together a little bit because what we uh, I, what, what I would like to share here is uh, that for today we have uh, maybe the one or the other may call it a strange uh, situation um, I have a DAX chart here and we have short trades and long trades and you know already the short trades are from that breakout strategy i think you have opened um, a long trade today is that right yes yes i'm long yeah <laughs> unfortunately i'm long because the funny i mean it's not funny uh, we're we're not talking about um, a big development today but uh, probably you can remember what i said yesterday yesterday uh, i was short and um, I said it would be nice, it would have been nice if the market uh, takes on some, some momentum here. And uh, I think 
there's a good target uh, on the downside against which probably we will trigger long then, which can be found around 12,500 to 520 points. And uh, as far as it seems here, the market really made it to this region. Um, today, unfortunately, the system today triggered a, a long position, which, uh, yeah, <laughs> so far uh, is not working out so well. But um, yes, I'm long to make long things short. Okay, but maybe it's a good time that you, you comment a little bit because we haven't touched that topic uh, up to now. Uh, the kind of discretionary approach of, um, so I, I think you have a really cool solution for combination of, of discretionary and um, rule-based trading, isn't it? Um, uh, yes, I would call it a cool solution too, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, thank you, thank you very much for this feedback. This is much appreciated. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, in fact, um, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm always a little smiling um, when someone uh, um, uh, calls my trading a discretionary uh, approach, even though it is in fact a discretionary approach. But I think many people out there probably think about discretionary trading um, in a way which is like, freestyle so i have a gut feeling and that's why i go long or short and in fact my my trading in fact is uh, completely different from that um but nevertheless it's still a discretionary approach so um to give a better idea of what i do is um i'm trading a profitable basic strategy um profitable basic strategy means nothing more than i know that the strategy if i just run the strategy is profitable in its basic version so it trades with a positive expected value um, and um, it, let's say let's assume that the, the expected value is something like uh, a 10 cents um, per euro we risk that means nothing more than let's say we risk 1000 euros that on average we make 100 euros per trade and it doesn't matter whether it's winning or losing trade um, and uh, now the thing is that my target as a, a discretionary trader then is or thanks to my experience or my knowledge or my um, uh, way of, of managing um, trades on an intraday um, time frame, my target is to increase this expected value to, to a high level. So it means um, if I have an expected value of 10 cents, um, my target is, for example, to um, bring this to 11 cents or 12 cents. So which may uh, at first glance look um, very, very small is in fact a change of 10 to 20%. So um, if you want, my, my target is to increase the profitability of a trading approach by another 10 to 20%. Um, and uh, so in this context, for example, um, it is that um, I have a clear exit rule um, the system lives by and then I try to optimize this, this exit. For example, um, let's take the Let's, let's just imagine that um, today the market, I, I was short instead of, of being long now, and the market is trading towards a region I consider to be a potential um, strong intraday support, which is uh, somewhere around 12,500 points, as already mentioned. Um, what I then um, look for is uh, to probably scale out at least something like half of the position in this region and um, if the market really finds support there and trades higher from there um, and the rest of the position is then taken up break even, for example, so plus minus uh, zero, um, I have compared to the basic strategy a better result, um, which means something like I probably um, scored 50 points plus while the strategy itself only scored 10 points. And then the difference is 40 points. And um, I track this in, uh, in a very simple way. So I have the basic strategy, uh, which runs on a demo account. And then I trade the um, this um, basic strategy with the discretionary approach on the live account. And at the end of the day, I look how I, um, um, how I performed compared to the basic strategy. So if I was better, the result is plus, let's say I'm 20 points better than in the result is plus 20 in my uh, journal. If I was, um, 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 if I performed um, less good or let's say um, worse than the basic strategy, uh, it's a minus, which means something like I performed minus 20%, uh, 20 points compared to the basic strategy. And what I then do is that I sum up these numbers and um, I look after let's say 50 to 100 trades, for example, if I performed better or worse compared to the basic strategy. So currently, for example, 
Um, what I can say is that um, from the day we started with this basket portfolio, that was, I think, on the 19th of February. So we are talking about two months from uh, back from now, um, that I'm currently um, ahead plus something like 300 points, 320 or so. That means that I um, performed 300 points better than the basic strategy. And this was thanks to, for example, scaling out of winning positions or um, scoring um, a smaller loss, for example, or um, sometimes dodging losing trades. So, for example, when looking at the market structure, they say, well, I have the feeling that probably chances are not that high that the market will go long from here or go short from here. And then I'm taking out the system. The thing is, I could be completely wrong with that. Um, so let's assume I, I, I skip one trade and then the result is plus 100 trades or so. Um, so I have to um, I have to to write down minus 100. So that was, by the way, a topic at the beginning of February when volatility was really high. Um, so that I that I try to dodge this higher volatility. The, the interesting thing is I um, scored a good profit. I, I was uh, profitable during this time. Nevertheless, if I just stuck to the basic strategy, I would have been even more profitable. Even though I think I do it the same way again. Nevertheless, it's important to. Um, write it down and then after several of those occasions finally find out whether it makes sense to probably just keep um, the system running and do not intervene at all during times of high volatility or if it's probably better to intervene here and um, take out the trades. But this is something uh, where you can already see that, that my trading, even though it's discretionary, is really quantitative to some extent. Yes. Oh, that's really great story behind. and. Um... And maybe comment from my end here, what you realize if Jens is talking about statistics, he's not looking for the day before yesterday or for five days and then drawing any conclusions. You see, Jens is talking about 50, 100 trading days or trades. And whenever you, you do analysis like that, you need statistics. And statistics is not looking for five numbers and drawing any conclusion out of uh, that you need um, much more um, numbers in, in in order to have real statistics so uh, it's great how you you approach uh, that and um, yeah you are to some extent um, a an, an strategy accelerator or uh, I don't know how exactly to call it, but it's uh, really great. I really like it. Strategy <laughs> accelerator is really nice. <laughs> and you see another aspect of um, of a portfolio right now here. And now let's let's do exactly what I call statistics one. And statistics one is if I look to a single day. And you see that we have an open short trade and we have long trade as well. You might think, mm, does it make sense? And the answer is yes, it does, because only then you you have um, a better overall risk management um, just to to have the two strategies. Uh, so to have Jens here today trading uh, long, but we have the breakout strategy of um, DAX and S and P five hundred, both now with a single position short. That makes sense because the that flattens overall your performance um, or the, your, your, your equity and makes drawdowns um, smaller. Of course, only if those strategies are um, overall um, profitable, but um, of course they are. So that's another aspect. Diversification, uh, even for the same underlying the same instrument, in this case DAX, um, we have that aspect within the JFD basket portfolio as well. That's one breakout strategy um, with six sub-strategies and we have another one here for gold. <clears throat> and uh, let's first start or have a look in, into the real account here, uh, how it looks there. Um, and we can go here um, and you see out of those six potential trades, we have one open, uh, one pending order here still open, and, and you see what happens here. Um, it's a nice thing to have that example today here. 
you see that we have a buy stop order here and we have a breakout to the south. Hmm. You may think, why don't we have a gold trade to the south? Okay, it would have been nice, yes, but first the reason why not? Since we look um, independently to long and short trades for gold, which is fundamental right, especially for gold, because finally the price of gold can only go north if nothing strange happens um, uh, you get a machine which can create gold uh, out of whatever um, then finally the price for gold should go north that means on the other hand to have the same strategy long and short doesn't make sense and in this case we from from the breakout scenario we only have been allowed to make a buy stop order in this case, of course, it's not triggered, um, but it is as it is. Finally, what we have within one year from starting at 2000, uh, we have um, a profit of a little bit less than 10%, um, which is still good. And it's one element within the portfolio here. If you have interest in all those parameters for those six SEP strategies, within gold so we have potentially three shorts and potentially three longs um, with different emas with uh, different risk reward ratios minimum ranges and so on and so forth uh, you have all the details here and you can download the slides or just send me an email and you get them um, and i think it's, uh, hopefully uh, i hope that it's self-explaining here um, so we only trade those shorts if um, price is below ema and we only trade those long uh, if the ema uh, if the price is above the ema so that's the logic behind and um, the minimum range is not that small uh, meaning that we don't have that many trades all the days um, there might even periods that we have a couple of days uh, in a row no trade within that strategy but if that is okay um, because we have other mm, potentials here as well those are the two strategies in more detail for today but let me um, remind you that we have still those ebooks available for the breakout strategy uh, Euro Japanese Yen, and um, you might remember the red curve within um, the strategy mix uh, of um, I presented. It's really a great strategy. And the other one, <clears throat> not being discussed that much today, that is a, a Duck Stay Week strategy. Um, we have all the descriptions here within that book and saying that which one is uh, uh, within the portfolio the ducks uh, day a week strategy it's a green one here and um, you see steady growth and then right now we are at 10 percent um, and that uh, in less than one year uh, for that single strategy so that's a nice combination but that's of course not all there's another aspect we have to care and that's a quite important one um, if you trade a portfolio if you trade such a basket and you do it professional then um, you have to manage your risk that's a key thing um, you have always um, to be aware of because risk is more or less everything even if you are profitable with your sub strategies and if you want to manage that risk you and you try to build up such a portfolio out of individual strategies uh, you might have in principle two kind of approaches of uh, how to 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 get the weights for the strategy in order to set weights for a single strategy within the overall basket so it's a maybe for the one or the other it's a luxury a luxury situation to have a couple of profitable strategies and not knowing the weighting factors for those but in this case it's an important um, a question and in our case we have nine sub strategies and what you can do is you can simply add them up with those weighting 
uh, factors. So you get a combined equity curve. Uh, you you can calculate the drawdown, and what you can even do, and it's more or less straightforward. You you can uh, find those nine weighting factors, which finally give you at minimum drawdown the highest profit. Of course, we can do that, but that's not uh, what we do. And what are the advantage, what is the advantage? The advantage is you definitely get the best result at all. Um, that's good. But since you put in the real history of the individual strategies, the risk of over-optimization within that procedure here is extremely high. Because you try, what you would do there is you, you you try to have a going up peak is the one strategy, same time to going down in the other one, and then weight them that, that balances. But if something like that happened in the past, <laughs> there's absolutely no guarantee that for the future, those two events, like the one goes up, uh, is extremely profitable, and the other one uh, generates losing trades, so that, that uh, flattens out once again that's extremely low the probability for that so in principle it gives you the best result but it's um not the way we decided to go for uh, because the risk of over optimization is quite huge what we did is instead we said let's be um concentrate on risk at all so let's look for what are our losses maximum per day for a single strategy so let's look exactly what was the worst day result for a single strategy and then just set up one number and that number we decided here is one percent we are willing or we ex would accept that the strategies in total would lose one percent in a single day as a maximum number. And then we we can spread that 1% to all those individual strategies. It might be a little bit more clear um, doing so if we look how we have done it. And look for one example here. We your Japanese yen breakout strategy. That is the count number, um, starting amount, current amount, monthly growth for that single strategy. And now, very important, worst day result, 14 euros. Then we can do it uh, on a percentage base. And then knowing that we the overall basket should have a risk per day of 1%, that means for that single strategy, we want to have maximum a 0.1%. Yeah, then we can trade exactly that number into the weight within the overall portfolio. For example, if I would put the weight 20%, then you would see, oh, that single strategy might result in a worst day result of nearly 0.3%, which is too high. All the single strategies are only allowed to have a worst day result of 0.1. So if worse comes to worse, those would sum up to 1%. And we are prepared even for that worst result, um, let's say, ever. And if you put the weighting factor right, then that single strategy within the overall basket uh, would only count for maximum 0.1% loss. And um, if all the strategies would have that worst day result simultaneously, finally, we would not exceed the 1% per day we set as a, a limit. Um, and that's the way how we manage here our risk. And, uh, and, and it works great. Just have a, a, a quick view on uh, daily results here starting at 19th of February. You see the daily results as bars here within that graph. And if I would do a strange calculation like looking only for the minus days, and building the average of those, um, then I get a number of 0.24%, which is fair enough. And you see that our worst day result up to now ever was a 0.5%. Uh, 
So that's a factor of two away from what should be allowed here. And um, so it works well. That's how we manage risk. And managing risk, I can only repeat myself here, is extremely important uh, within any uh, portfolio trading. Let me cover one additional topic. If you are interested in um, to participate within the JFD Basket portfolio, that's really quite easy. Um, you you just send an email to the support of JFD uh, brokers, and you see the email address here uh, that you want to open an account for JFD uh, Basket portfolio. And if you are already a client of uh, JFD, then it it's even easier because then you are already registered and uh, you know this is that kind of legitimation process and everything is done. But if not, then uh, people will guide you through that process as you open a normal account. And then the key figures um, that you know them, if you are interested in that JVD basket portfolio, is um, there's a minimum account size of 2,500 euro, which is really a low number. If you think about wealth management at all, normally those things start maybe at 100K, um, uh, so 100,000 euro upwards. And we have an annual <coughs> management fee Two uh, percent of um, your invested money, and we have a performance fee of twenty-five percent. It may sound high, but it's the logic behind this high watermark, uh, and um, that simply means if we have a very good months um, and we are reaching new highs, then you would have to pay. If you go down once again. Of course, you don't have to pay a performance fee. And even if you go up, you still don't have to pay until we exceed the last high. So that's high watermark. Um, and uh, that's, I think, a, a fair solution um, for, for that. You can deposit or withdraw at any time money. So And you can always have a live standing of your account um, via JFD. Um, my JFT portal. So that's really a nice thing. And um, if you have further questions, just send me an email. Uh, uh, that's easy. And um, we would like to help you there as much as we can. Oh, I see. Hmm. It's already eight, uh, at least German time. Um, let's go a little bit for the summary for today. So JFT basket portfolio is, we would, I would call it a, a wealth, manage, wealth management for everybody, more or less. And you see how we do things. We have a portfolio of trading strat uh, strategies, which are very big combination and <clears throat> very diversified combination, which is a great thing. And we have, um, once again, today presented two strategies in detail. And you see how they work, open range breakout strategies for DAX, S&P 500, and gold. And of course, still those um, other strategies um, are available. And um, if you just uh, want to have those eBooks <clears throat> or slides or whatever, just send me an email. That's absolutely no problem here um, to, to make sure that you get everything uh, you want. Yeah, maybe, maybe Jens, uh, do you have a final word on um, how you feel with the overall project of uh, JFD Basket Portfolio? Um, yes, as already said yesterday uh, in the German format, I'm in fact uh, very proud to be part of this. Um, and uh, the, the main reason is in fact because this is uh, not just, I, I think it's not only a wealth product for everybody, um, but it's something which is uh, completely new to this industry. So there have been many managed accounts out there um, and uh, they were managed more or less from uh, only one person, someone um, who considers himself a trader or was considered a trader from, from, uh, from um, whoever and, and just said, yes, I offered this and uh, got a licensed umbrella, let's say, and then offered the product. But in our case, it's, uh, it's really professional. It's a real professional solution, um, which means 
we um, we are uh, not only one person, but we are a team, and uh, we are very very professional when it comes to risk management around uh, the um, deposits of the clients, for example, the strategies which are discussed in detail. So we're having a call at least once a week um, to discuss all these things. So it's um, let's call it really hedge fund like somehow. And uh, I think this is something to be, yeah, if you're a part of this, to be really proud of. Um, and that's exactly how I feel about it. Okay, thanks, uh, Jens, um, once again here to have you here. Yeah, so uh, that was a second webinar about the JFD Basket Portfolio. And you see, that's exactly how JFD works. Um, JFD, by the way, it stands for just, fair, and direct. That are the three letters. And we, I would even add another letter, and that would be a T for transparent or transparency. That's what we try to achieve here, to really talk about everything frankly, to open um, our books to have that view behind the scene so that you really know what's going on <clears throat> if you um, want to be part of that and that's really uh, something totally different to any other I know uh, to have that kind of transparency uh, here even for wealth management which is a good thing I think okay so that's for today I hope you we see you again at any kind of webinar of Jens, uh, myself next week will be the next month. You know, um, there's a big bundle of offerings uh, around uh, webinars. So right now it's time uh, to say goodbye. Yeah, that's all right. But um, to wish you a good evening and um, all the best for you. That's from my end. Yes, and uh, from my end too. So have a nice evening and hope to see you tomorrow in the morning meeting, 9.30 a.m. GMT, YouTube channel from JFT Brokers. Uh, I look forward to it. Perfect. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye, guys.